sure you know that you're being heard. You speak very loud, sometimes you're soft at the microphone, so lean in and make sure you're very, very, very you Give yourself a bold. Yep. Sometimes you're quiet. I am quiet. Parents, students, relatives, educators, friends, and members of the class of 2022. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to the Belmont High School commencement exercises in honor of the class of 2022. Please stand for our national anthem, performed by the Belmont High School Symphonic Band and Wind Ensemble. Thank you. Class of 2022, this is a time in the world when compromise is not just a nice thing to have, it is essential. You don't need me to run you through a list of all the current national and world issues where there are strong opinions on both sides. You all have been living it and witnessing that an the anxiety that comes when people cannot come together. Earlier this year, at the NHS National Honor Society induction, I listened as the quality of leadership was explained by the officers. What struck in my mind was that leadership requires finding consensus, and consensus requires compromise. We all know it's true even when it's hard to admit. If we will not settle for anything less than exactly what we want, we cannot be a leader. That is why leadership tests us, especially when we know that we are right. 
Every year, I learn something new from observing students. And this year, I have learned a lot about compromise, as I have watched all of you redefine what balance looks like in your lives. When trying to balance workload in your classes, many of you came to speak with me about midterms. This was an issue that divided people, with some wanting to keep them as they were and others wishing to abolish them. A student said to me, Mr. Taylor, midterms are causing a lot of stress for students. And if you don't take our concerns seriously, then what's the point of saying you care about student voice? A teacher said to me, Isaac, the goal is not to stress students, but we've had a couple of unusual years, and it would be helpful to find out what students know so we can meet their needs. Somewhere in the middle, we found a way to do midterms that wasn't perfect for everyone, that worked, but that worked for most of us. We were all able to give something up to take us in a unified direction. I saw the same thing happening when we worked on our values this year. After a turbulent reopening in the fall of 2021, most of us believed that it was important to come together around community values. The only way to get 1,500 people to whittle down a list of 60 values to a final four is through compromise. This is something that you did, the student body, by working with administration and teachers to decide what we could all live with. As we came towards the end of the process, staff worried that students would not be able to advocate for their views. This could not be further from the truth. And now our values of kindness, equity, perseverance, and responsibility um, may not have been the list that you would have put together, but by the end of the process, most of us can get behind them. In so many ways, you are a class that exemplifies compromise and working together, whether planning a walkout or a dance, questioning the school's approach to equity or to recycling in the CAF. You have shown that you can work with other people with passion and with conviction. Finding consensus can only happen when people work together, and you are a class that works well in teams, big and small. It is always great to see good teamwork coming together on the turf and the court, in the water, uh, and on the ice. But teamwork for the class of 22 could be seen everywhere. Your class officers ensured that you were the only school in the area to bring back homecoming this past fall, gave you a prom and a cruise to remember, and helped us to adjust and find ways that students can use our new building. The Five Minutes Ago team put the class of 2020 spin on this year's production and informing staff and students alike. The performing arts brought back concerts and SpongeBob and improv in a facility that was being built around them by deciding how to live with what they had. And all of you have made the most of your shifting, unpredictable high school years by being flexible, working with your teachers, and looking out for your friends. When I was a new teacher, people would often say to me, the students look younger and younger every year you teach. As I look out at all of you today, you do look very young. But that is not the first thing that I see. What I see is hope. Hope for the future, hope for our world, hope for humanity. What I see is a generation of humans who are smarter than me, more agile than I am, and more accepting and more compassionate than I knew how to be. As a class, you have tested me by asking me to think about what I am doing and why I am doing it. You are not people who accept what you are told without question, without explanation. You are a generation that thinks broadly, likes solving problems, and demands respect. Tomorrow, when you open your eyes as alumni of Belmont High School, I have no doubt that you will have your wits about you. You are coming of age in a time of great global change. 
When I graduated from high school almost 30 years ago, there was a sense of predictability in the world that does not exist today. In 2022, it is clear that humanity will need to find consensus on many important things that affect us all. The infrastructure of our planet, our environment and biodiversity must be stabilized. Equity and equality need to be improved across the planet, and we will have to define ethical and practical boundaries of the technology and biotech revolutions. And we may be facing decisions that appear as science fiction right now, such as colonizing the solar system, augmenting the human body with technology, and even making immortality possible. If we are going to make these decisions in a way that preserves democracy, collaboration and compromise are critical. No matter the role you play in shaping the future, remember that human relationships are at the center of every endeavor. Every business is at its core a people business. We remember this to our advantage. And if we are going to put people first, then we must pay attention to relationships and be there for other people. This means being kind by going out of our way to do things that benefit humans other than ourselves. This means being accepting, making people feel welcome. It means listening and observing others so we can meet them where they are. Ultimately, Putting relationships first means seeing the humanity in the people we encounter. And in order to do that, we must first see the humanity in ourselves. We live in a world of computers, algorithms, and machines, but we are organic, sentient beings. We require, we require more than fuel to power us, and we need more than information to learn. We are people. And people do our best work when we have the time, space, love, understanding, acceptance, and respect. It is hard to give to other people when we withhold from ourselves. Class of 2022, I believe in you. I am proud of our students for increasing LGBTQ plus visibility at Belmont High School this year. I am indebted to our students of color for sharing your experiences and opening my eyes to my own bias. I am proud of all our students who have ever felt marginalized and unnoticed. I see you, I hear you. I am grateful to have been your principal and to be here with you now on your graduation day. It is now my great, great pleasure to introduce you to, you to Hamza Masood, the president of the class of 2022. Uh, before I begin, I just want to take a quick moment uh, to say hello to my grandfather, Jeffrey Alcorn, um, who's in the hospital right now. But I just want to say, um, I love you, Grandpa. I wish you were here. Um, and this one's for you. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take off this hat. I feel like I look kind of like a, some kind of wizard. Um, I'm just going to put this here. All right. Sorry, I've got to find my page. Give me a moment. Good morning, friends, classmates parents, teachers, and people need to use the bathroom. It is a pleasure to see you all here today and celebrate with you. Now, to pay tribute to everything we've been through over the past few years, I was initially going to give a very long speech today. But, you know, I think we all want to go ahead and graduate, and I think we're all a bit tired. Uh, so I've decided to cut my d speech down substantially. Only 30 minutes. When I sat down to write this speech, I wanted to capture all of the emotions we're feeling as we prepare to leave behind this community we've built, say goodbye to friends and teachers who've been with us our whole lives, and to go make our way in a strange, intimidating, and exciting world as adults. 
So to do this, I went through the tried and true five-step writing process that the majority of us, that the majority of, us of, of us have used for almost every essay we've written over the past few years. Step one is simple. Close the door to shut out any distractions, sit down, fire up your Chromebook, and solve today's wordle. <laughs> Step two is where the thinking begins. That is, the thinking about how hungry you are. Step three is to go to the kitchen and enjoy a frozen pizza. Step four involves intensive research on either TikTok, YouTube, Instagram Reels, or Snapchat Explore. Now, step five is the really tricky part, as you might have guessed. Um, and it can't begin until approximately 11.15 PM, the night before your paper or speech is due. It's at this point that you realize that getting the wordle in three tries hasn't made you a better writer, that the pizza you ate made you more tired than inspired, and that the only valuable thing you learned from TikTok is that Charlie D'Amelio is a half-decent dancer. It's at this point that an emotional cocktail of anxiety, regret, fear, and a small dose of liberation motivates you to write, revise, edit, and complete your work within the hour. And that's how the speech was born. When, when I finally reached step five, I made a list of all the lessons we've learned over the past four years. These lessons covered a wide range of topics. For instance, this year, I learned that if you want to hold a homecoming dance in the dark, you probably shouldn't do it in a room with motion-activated lighting. But I wanted to focus on the lessons that all of us have learned, like the fact that the word rugby is a synonym for cult. <laughs> or that even if you spend $300 million on a beautiful brand new high school, you're still going to have a human crush in the main stairwell after every single class period. We've even learned that culture is actually spelled with a K. But those weren't the lessons that stuck out to me. Instead, there are three really important lessons we've learned that I want to reflect on today. And while we, may, wait, while we might not have all learned these lessons in the same way or at the same time, I think that they're relevant to all of us. So, lesson number one. We should not be afraid of rejection. I actually just learned this lesson this year, and I didn't learn it as a result of any big milestone or event. I didn't learn it at the homecoming or at the cruise or at prom. I learned it when I asked a girl out to prom. Spoiler alert, she said no. <laughs> and I took it pretty tough at first, but I got over it and carried on. About a whole week passed, um, and then almost out of the blue, the same young lady uh, who I'd asked came up to me and said, hey, can I talk to you? So I said, sure. So we sit down, and she looks me deep in the eyes. She says, Hamza, I just want you to know that I'm not going to the prom with you. <laughs> and I was like, hold up, haven't we been over this? <laughs> Yes, I got rejected twice, and I didn't even ask the second time. <laughs> now, you might ask, what's the point of this story besides being moderately funny and thoroughly embarrassing? Uh, it's this. You never know when you're going to fail or get turned down. You might even be like me and get rejected for doing nothing. So you might as well try doing something that scares you. That's how you stretch yourself. The second lesson we've learned was probably best summed up by doctor, notable phil philanthropist, and sometimes musician, Taylor Swift, who said something along the lines of, the haters are going to hate, 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 but I'm just going to shake it off. Now, I think what she actually said was she's just going to shake, 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 shake it off, but I'm trying to keep this to 30 minutes, so we're going to cut that. <laughs> and while it's a catchy lyric, it's also a powerful message, because every single one of us has had doubters. You all know what I'm talking about. We all have a few people in our lives who, for whatever reason, are being mean to us or just putting us down. And many times, we have absolutely no idea what we did to these people to deserve it. You know, I have people like this, too. My current theory is that I met these people in a past life and did something to them back then, and now we've been reincarnated together and they're mad at me. Like, maybe back in ancient times, I was enemies with one of them, and we fought on the battlefield. Or maybe I was married to another one of them, and we had a really acrimonious divorce, and I keyed their car. Maybe I slapped one at the Oscars. Who knows? But at one point or another, all of us have learned that the best thing we can do is to take a page out of Taylor's book and shake, 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 shake it off. Or you could take another page out of her book and write a song about everyone who crosses you. Point is, we know not to let others bring us down. Yet, while we know how to rise above our haters, and this is the third lesson, we've also learned how imperative it is that we don't become haters ourselves. Having grown up together over the past 12 years, we all feel a sense of closeness to one another, kind of like siblings, or if not like siblings, then at least like second cousins on good terms. 
But just like siblings or second cousins, it's also easy for us to become jealous of one another, especially when we're all doing such impressive things. While all of us are extremely fine and talented indiv individuals, none of us are perfect. We all have things that we wish we could do, but just can't. Let me give you an example. For me, I've always been a little bit jealous of athletes, especially those who play basketball. It's hard for me to accurately describe to you the pain of being as tall as I am and sucking as badly at basketball as I do. I mean, it's, it's awful. It's like if you're super hungry and you have all the ingredients to bake like a perfect cake and the oven's broken. <laughs> I got cut from every team and I would go to the games and see my classmates flying through the air, shooting threes and dunking. That might have been the Celtics. Um, and I must admit, though, I had hate in my heart. But over time, that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> over time, each of us has learned that being jealous of one another only prevents us from appreciating just how amazing we all are. Because when we think about it, it is incredibly inspiring to have grown up with people who can sink threes on the basketball court or dominate a chess tournament or play the third movement of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Don't get me started on how bad at piano I am. We all have so much to offer each other, which brings me to my final point. These three lessons that we should push past rejection, ignore the haters, and appreciate one another, these lessons that have been so essential to our high school careers and to our lives have one crucial thing in common. I didn't learn them in calculus or chemistry or chorus. I learned them from you all. We have had excellent teachers inside the classroom but we have also had pretty great teachers outside the classroom, and that's us. Listen, I'm 18 years old. I've got seven years left until my brain's fully developed, uh, so I don't know what life's gonna be like in the future. Personally, my sole focus for the next few years is meticulously planning every single detail of our five-year reunion. <laughs> but my hope is that even after we leave here, we will continue to teach and learn from our new peers wherever we go, and then, in five years' time, at our reunion, when we all come back with all of our life experiences, we can teach and learn from one another once again. Of course, by that time, I'll be much too busy playing the 10-year reunion to actually show up to the five-year reunion, but I'll be thinking of you. Thank you, guys. I love you all. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you, Hamza. That was great. Come on. I would now like to ask Superintendent John Phelan to come to the podium for the presentation of the two school committee awards. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Welcome graduates of the class of 2020. I welcome their parents, their grandparents, friends and relatives, our faculty, members of the school committee, and our special guests. I am pleased to present the first of two school committee awards for outstanding achievement in scholarship. The first award is presented to a senior who is an ambitious young man who radiates happiness and shares his interest enthusiastically with others. He has served as the captain of the Belmont High School Math and Science Clubs. He has served as a tutor for younger students and enjoys organizing friends, peers for study groups. He has won numerous awards, including a gold medal in the Biology Olympics at Marymount University, where he, captured with, where he competed with over 10,000 students. He will attend MIT in the fall where he will continue to pursue his studies in STEM. Although he is not with us today, the recipient of this award is Derek Chen, who now in today is competing in a national biology competition. So please, a big round of applause for Derek Chen. The second school committee award for outstanding achievement and scholarship is presented to the senior, this, the senior who is an unassuming force to be reckoned with. 
She has been recognized twice for excellent and achievement in Chinese, is highly involved with musical pursuits as a successful oboist with awards from the Boston Youth Symphony Orchestra. This past summer, she received an invitation to participate as a counselor in training at the Texas A&M Seacamp Marine Engineering Program. She plans to continue her academic pursuits at Georgetown University this fall. The recipient of this award is Catherine Arkin. Congratulations, Catherine. Thank you, Superintendent Phelan, Assistant Superintendent Darius, Chairperson Moriarty, and Principal Taylor. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2022. We as, a <laughs> we as a class have been through so much together. We arrived at Belmont High School as freshmen, filled with excitement and apprehension as we wondered who our teachers would be and where we would sit during lunch. We quickly discovered that if someone told us the class we were looking for was on the third floor or in the basement, they were messing with us, that Triple Thursday is arguably the worst day of the week, and that swimming in Clay Pit Pond is in fact not a good idea. We joined clubs, sports teams, and musical ensembles, and surrounded ourselves with people that would cheer us on when we succeeded and help build us back up when we failed. When we returned the next year as sophomores, we felt confident and comfortable. As more and more of us turned 16 and got our learner's permits, more and more teachers began to consider biking to school instead of driving. Many of us found out that Ms. White's ideal prom date is John Adams, and outside of school, we began hearing about a new disease emerging. Everything changed when we received word that the Belmont Public Schools would temporarily close beginning on March 13, 2020. I don't think any of us expected that they would remain closed for the rest of the school year. We were confined to our homes, unable to see our friends, classmates, and teachers, except through a computer screen or from at least a six-foot distance. This continued to be the case for the first half of our junior year. Although we had to adjust to countless different daily schedules, we took advantage of our ability to roll out of bed at 7.55 and make it to class on time, and the fact that for once, we had plenty of time to eat lunch each day. Then, as vaccines became available to the public and the number of COVID-19 cases began to decline, more and more students and teachers returned to the school building. We quickly discovered how distracting banging and drilling can be as construction continued around us. By the fall of our senior year, we were all back in person. Attempting to navigate four floors of classrooms made us feel like freshmen all over again as we acclimated to the new building. We trudged up and down the stairs each day, waited less than patiently in extremely long lunch lines, and enjoyed hanging out in the school's new common areas. We took advantage of our off-campus privileges, attended Belmont High School's first ever homecoming dance, and partook in other senior traditions. Oh, and we went to class most of the time. Ironically, looking back on senior year, I realized that I spent a large portion of it thinking about the future. Like most of my fellow graduates, I faced questions regarding what my life after high school would be like. What did I want to do? Where did I want to go? Who did I want to be? At the beginning of the pandemic, everything was uncertain and the world seemed to shut down. But life continued on and we found a way to move with it. We mastered Zoom and Google Meet, made masks for people in need, and explored our passions, both new and rediscovered. We continue to live in uncertain times. As we leave high school behind and enter the next phase of our lives, the pandemic continues, the health of our planet deteriorates, innocent people are killed in mass shootings, the safety of rights we thought were protected comes into question, and countries war with one another. People all over the world, regardless of their circumstances, are taking action today in hopes of creating a better tomorrow. Many of us have gotten involved by attending rallies, organizing walkouts, and helping to educate others. Others of us have done so by checking in with people when they seem like they're having a rough day, showing our appreciation for people's hard work, and trying to make other people's lives a little bit easier. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we don't want to be in a position where we regret not being a part of something, not standing up for what we believe in, and not helping to make the world a better place. So, class of 2022, Live in the moment with the intent of creating a better future. Let life sweep you away and observe and truly experience what's going on around you. Throw yourself into the things you're passionate about and make the most of every situation you find yourself in. Thank you and congratulations again.
Thank you, Catherine. At this time, I would like to invite the senior a cappella group to perform Dawn by Eric William Barnum. Dawn by Eric William Barnum. From the door's soft opening and the day's first sigh, filling the room, I see before me a life of doors, one opening on another. Doors upon doors and sighs upon sighs, rising in a tide of mornings, rising until that final sigh. And the last morning and the last holy breath, whispering this. At this time, I would like to invite Superintendent John Phelan back to the podium for the presentation of diplomas. Thank you, Principal Taylor. On behalf of the school committee of the town of Belmont as superintendent of schools for Belmont in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I hereby certify the Belmont High School class of 2020. At this time, I'd like to ask Principal Taylor and our school committee members to come to the podium to present the diplomas. Congratulations, class of 22.
let me know whenever. Go ahead. Catherine Arkin. <laughs> Isabel Abdullah. <laughs> Omar Tayoun. <laughs> Greg Alasso. <laughs> Conrad Alejandre. Jason Allen. <laughs> Mariam Hassan Al Musalami. Jordan Anderson. <laughs> Safia Awa. <laughs> Tyler Arno. Dalene Arias. <laughs> Lauren Arsenault. <laughs> Madeline Babcock and Enzo. <laughs> Catherine Bai. Anna Adanasova. Anjana Balakrishnan. Ryan Baldi. Diane Balsan. James Barmakian. Alden Barnes. Matthew Barrios. James Barsom. Lot Bates. Duncan Beecroft. Ani Balorian. <laughs> Rafi Balorian. <laughs> Natish Bata. <laughs> Lisa Billy Rossi. <laughs> Sophia Billy Rossi. Bianca Brzezinski. Ryan Broderick. Henry Brown. Nicole Bufano. Ian Burns. Mia Barroso. Jocelyn Kai. Kyria Kane. Ava Carreri. Gemma Carlisle. Emma Margaret Casey. Sergio Castillo. Noah Cepeda. Elizabeth Chambers. Phoebe Chamian. Krista Chan.
Manushka, Chave. Yeah, Celine, Chauvier. Alan Chen. Edward Cho. Ji Min Choi. Se Young Choi. Charles Crystal. Simon Crystal. Madeline May Christensen. Connor Christmas. Meredith Christo. Angelo Clemens. Jackson Coelho. James Isaac Cohen. Andrew Coleman. Ezra Cope Sphinx. Iris Coyne. Lincoln Crockett. Kiara Andrea Curtin. Molly Dacey. Emmett Dahlberg. Ava Dargon. Cecilia De La Fuente. Josh DePamphilus. Layla Diab. Giorgio Dear Bakerly. Zoe Dill. Abraham Dion. Anthony Dawkin. John Dolan. Leonardo Domingo. Elena Dominiak. Anna Donaldson. Jesse Dong. Owen Dowling. Yay! Emma Duff Pierce. Yay! Paula Dulligan. Yay! Sarah Dulligan. Trisanne Dunstan. Yay! Haley Eager. Daniel Eck. Justine Endo Ferguson. Anna Epstein. Oriana Escalante. Mateo Estrada. Helen Feldhaus. Heidi Teresita Fernandez. Daniel Fiaco. Daniel! Mia Filler. Talia Fiore. Brian Furpo. Annie Flat.
Leander Frank. Lucy Fremont Smith. Eloisa Gabler. Shanta Gardner. Leon Gah. Shani Getz. Aaron Garibian. Nick Gian Gregorio. Mia Giatrellis. Ian Gensel. Coton Gomez. Joyce Gong. Eli Gao. Lily Grant. Sean Gray. Emily Greenhow. Ryan J. Griffin. Jacques Gregorian. Filippo Cristina. Bobby Grossbaum. Miriam Gross. Dave Gooden. Kevin Gooden. Lucas Harbouche. Lydia Haddad. Anna Maria Hamill. Evie Hamer. Casey Jade Hansen. Arshia Hawk. Roger Houck. Guthrie Hayden. Anthony He. Greg Goyumjian. Ayana Henderson. Thank you so much. <laughs> Quinn Kathleen Hallway Ava Hopkins Sophia Marie Hospitar Tiffany Hu Andrew Huang Bruce Hudson. Amanda Jane Hurley. Olivia Hurtabies. Kara Ayanuzi. Victor Insanich. Rina Ishii. Valeria Yuri. Ian Jackson. Chris Jackson. Francesca Hayen Maisonet. Aditya Jane. Yeah. Hubert Jang. Ella Elizabeth Johnson. Yeah. 
Milo, Sage, Anderson, Jones. NC Kimberry. Alana Jones. Tilda Jones. Chris Jorgensen. Emily Kaiser. Sui Ren Kajita. David Kalantar. Alex Kazarian. Nathan Kafayan. Roxy Kelleher. Helen Kelly. Alexander Kelso. Jimmy Kearns. Kayla Kiley. Patrick Kilcoin. Clark Kinzinger. Francesca Chaley Kitch. Eva Kokoros. Jacob Coplo. Megan Kornberg. Jack Kovac. Kirill Kubenbender. Sofia Labudovic. Isaac Lang. Keelan Curran Lally. Victor Lamb. Alexandra Landry. Yeah. Calvin LaPierre. <laughs> Dylan Lazary. Gordon Lassiter. Guan Lee. Roman Gerard Legier. Alice Lessa. Ivan Lee. Zhonghai Lee. Daniel Liao. Syrah Licht. Mariana Lilla. Brian Lin. Mike Lin. Dahlia Lu. Dobbin Lou. Alice Lou. Hannah Lowenstein. Kevin Logan. Brian Looney. 
Andrew Liu. Samuel Lucio. Sam McFadgen. Chloe Meyer Georgitis. Nareen Maserijan. Colby Maxim. Christian Manjikian. Yeah, and Monken. Grace Margaret Mannix. Jalen Marchetta. Elia Matrician. Kate McAlinden. Katrina McCarthy. James McCubbin. Elizabeth McLaughlin. Vivian McLaughlin. Marina McMullen. Parham Madati. Maria Mejia. Isabella Mellish. Joe Michaud. John Militic. Henry K. Min. Korma Minarovic. Nick Thomas Masidi. Liam Mitchell. Avery Monovic. Jack Moran. Zach Moss. Mia Mueller. Daniel Malemba. <laughs> Brianna R. Murphy. Patrick A. Narkotsky. Rosanna Nazarian. Lamique Neal. Adi Nelson. Caroline Nortz. Charles November. Laura of Charova. Shanta Pai. Elena Palmer. Anna Penkov. George Pantazopoulos.
Cameron Palmer. George Palmer. Joseph Poulsen. Joe Cho. Benjamin Quinn. Leo Rayboy. Sanford Reynolds. Alana Ribeiro. Mary Roca. Maya Rodriguez Clark. Amelia Rono. Heidi Rono. Eric Rosenmeyer. Tyler Ross. Maddie Rowan. Jaden Run. Alice Rusi. Jacqueline Ryan. Tommy Ryder. James Sandler. Kayla G. Santoro. Emilio Santos. Santos. Tamara Sargsian. Grace Sattler. Dominic Scalise. Spencer Scally. Sarah Scott. Karuba Shalin. Katie Shea. Colin Shea. Nolan Sheehan. Liliette Shen. Agnes Shen. Sajni Sheth Voss. Tasha Simmons. Trevor Smith. Irene Sun. Naomi Stevenson. Sam Stevens. Kathy Sway. James Sutherland. Claire I. Svecki. Aubrey Telanian. Nelson Tang. Yu Han Tang. Marguerite Desmar. Mary Thompson. Annie Ty Tolan. Dana Trifonovich. 
Nicole Urban. Julio Valfrey, Zade Edmond. Julia Vecchi. Charles Verde. Alexandra Vero. Tyler Vuong. Albert Wang. Nia Lael Wangia. Lindsay Watson. Catherine Waugh. Violet Whitmer. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bridget Holly. John Hooley. Alexander Wong. Sarah Wynn. Michael Zing. Carmen Xiong. Andre Yardimian. Jeffrey Yi, Julia Ying, Alexandra Zarkadas, Daniel Zhang, Sam Zhang. Tony Zhao. <laughs> Kenneth Zhao. Ju. Annie Zhu. Sorry. <laughs> Milena Isabella Paz Zlatkovic. <laughs> Eliezer Abinas. Andy Way. <laughs> Michelle Jang. <laughs> Sammy Awad. <laughs> Maeve Quinlan Miller. Shivane Pratap. <laughs> Last but not least, Hamza Tarek Masood. Would the class of 2022 please stand? It's time for the turning of the tassels, so at this time, please turn your tassel. 
Congratulations, class of 2022. You are now and forever will be alumni of Belmont High School. Go out into the world with an open heart, a clear mind. Congratulations. This concludes our ce ceremony today. Thanks. Excellent job. This is 100% all names. I will. I will. Yeah.